Werner von Braun's creation of the A-4 missile was the first step towards taking humans into space. But though von Braun and other German scientists had their eyes set on reaching the heavens, their job was to produce weapons for the Third Reich and not space rockets. But the A-4 was the first rocket in history that could begin to edge man into space exploration, if Hitler had so decreed. The common name for the A-4 was V-2, with the V in German standing for Vergeltungswaffe, or retribution weapon. It was conceived simply as a method for attacking Britain remotely, and in this regard it was a complete success. The V-2 changed the history of the world by introducing a workable guided ballistic missile and a rocket that was capable of reaching space. The V-2 was developed over several years and entered service in 1944, was powered by the reaction of an ethanol water fuel and liquid oxygen mixture to produce thrust. The rocket would burn for 65 seconds. An onboard motor controlling pitch to the specific angle at engine shutdown at 80 kilometers or 50 miles altitude. Then the unpowered V-2 would continue on a ballistic free-fall trajectory to the target in England. The missile carried a 910 kilo or 2,010 pound warhead. Once airborne, the British could not shoot the V-2 down since it plunged towards London, coming down at three times the speed of sound at sea level. That is approximately 3,550 kilometers an hour or just over 2,200 miles per hour. Unlike the earlier V weapon, the first cruise missile, the V-1 flying bomb, the V-2 was launched by special mobile batteries that could fire missiles from practically anywhere, the weapon having an operational range of 320 kilometers, or 200 miles. The V-2s did quite a bit of damage to London and South East England, and also against European targets at Antwerp and Liège, some 3,000 V-2s killing 9,000 people, and destroying or damaging hundreds of thousands of homes and businesses. Werner von Braun also had his eye set on space, and during a vertical test launch on the 20th of June 1944, a V-2 climbed to a maximum altitude of 176 kilometers, or just over 108 miles. That is 76 kilometers above the official beginning of space, the Karman Line, making Nazi Germany the first nation to reach the stars. However, Allied ground advances after D-Day steadily pushed the Germans back until the V-2s were no longer in range of London. Hitler was naturally annoyed by this. Von Braun and the other German rocket scientists were ordered to find a way of increasing the V-2s range so that a new campaign of terror could be unleashed against England. But Von Braun was already way ahead. For long before the first V-2 had even been fired at England, he and his team had started design work on a multi-stage missile in anticipation that V-2 launch sites would be pushed out of range by ground combat. The new rocket was called the A-9-A-10, being of two distinct parts. A-10 was the lift vehicle. The first design was completed on the 26th of June 1940 by Ludwig Rott, while work to perfect the V-2 was underway. Propulsion was to be six V-2 rocket engines, giving a total thrust of 180 tonnes. On the 20th of August 1941, von Braun, along with the V-weapons head General Walter Dornberger and the head of missile guidance development Ernst Steinhoff, presented films of various rocket launches and plans for a two-stage rocket to Hitler at the Wolf's Lair, his headquarters in East Prussia. Dornberger was keen on developing a weapon that could hit America, as it seemed the United States would enter the war on the Allied side sooner rather than later. Roth's design would have had the A-10 burn for 60 seconds, taking the A-9 to an altitude of 35 miles above the Earth. 
The A9 could then glide 2,500 miles to New York City in about 35 minutes. Design work was halted at the end of 1941, as all efforts turned to the V-2. However, in late 1944, with the war situation looking very bleak for Germany, the project was revived under the ominous codename Project America, or Project America, and the intention was obvious, to mount a V-2-style rocket campaign against the United States' eastern seaboard. The A-10's engine configuration was further modified to produce 200 tons of thrust, and test stands for these engines were actually built the main rocket test facility at Peenemünde in northern Germany. The second stage of the rocket was, of course, the A-9, itself a modification of the A-4 or V-2. An intermediate design between the A-4 and the A-9 was produced and tested, called the A-4B. Importantly, the A-4B had swept back wings, extending its range to 750 kilometers or 470 miles, theoretically allowing it to hit Britain from launch sites in Germany. But what von Braun and some of the other scientists really wanted to do was to place an A-4B on top of an A-10 booster. The first test firing of an A-4B was made on the 27th of December 1944, but failed. The second launch on the 24th of January 1945 was more successful, the A-4B reaching Mach 4, breaking the sound barrier before one wing broke off. The A-9 would be essentially an A-4B, but a little bit bigger, with an improved wing design for gliding, its engine producing 30% more thrust. Coupling the A-9 with the A-10 booster would produce a weapon capable of hitting New York City. The A-10 was 20 metres, or 66 feet tall, and powered by a 380,000 pound thrust rocket that burned diesel oil and nitric acid. The engine would burn for 50 seconds, lifting the combined rocket system at a speed of 4,300 kilometres an hour, or 2,700 miles per hour, to the staggering altitude of 400 kilometres, or 250 miles above the Earth. That is the same altitude as the International Space Station today. The A-10 was designed to be reusable. After expending its fuel, the A-10 would drop away from the A-9, parachutes would deploy, and the A-10 would land in the sea to be recovered for further launches. The problem the Germans faced was not the rockets themselves. They could get to New York City, but the A-9's guidance system, which was the same as that in the V-2. The solution was fairly radical, make the A-9 a piloted rocket, and by doing so, the Germans would have been the first to place a human in space. A Luftwaffe pilot would be guided on his terminal glide towards New York City by radio beacons aboard U-boats in the Atlantic, and by automatic weather stations in Greenland and Labrador. By 1945, however, U-boats risked almost inevitable detection and destruction by Allied anti-submarine warfare forces if they transmitted at sea. It was possible, but risky, and the Germans did succeed in setting up an automatic weather station codenamed Kurt in northern Labrador in October 1943. However, several manned weather stations established by the Germans on Greenland were all detected and destroyed by late 1944. A U-boat would have had to install an automatic station in Greenland for the Project America to have been contemplated, again a risky manoeuvre so late in the war. And what about the presumably volunteer pilot? The A-9-A-10 missile was not a suicide weapon. It was intended that once the A-9 was in clear sight of the target, the pilot would bail out, and an autopilot would complete the final glide into the target. The important point is, unlike the V-2, which arrived at three times the speed of sound, the A-9 was intended to glide into its target at a shallower angle and slower speed, and thereby it would have been possible 
for a pilot to eject from the aircraft. But both the A9 and A10 projects were terminated because of material and fuel shortages. The A4B also went no further. Though the US had dodged the bullet, it is clear that if the A9-A10 project had been pressed on with earlier in the war and resources properly allocated to it, Hitler would have had a workable ICBM towards the end of the war, and the consequences for America could have been somewhat worrying. As it was, von Braun and his team ironically went to work for the Americans after the war. And the Nazi period rocket research was absorbed into US efforts to get a man in space and eventually to reach the moon. Please subscribe and share. If you like being read to, visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Link in the description box below. You can also help support my channels via PayPal and Patreon. See the description for details.